Hi everybody, welcome back! Sipsopolis! We're making money! Finally! My god! What a stressful last six episodes or so. Uh, was the, la the last six episodes were a little bit stressful, a little bit touch and go for old Sipsopolis. Uh, there were a lot of uh, low points, uh, more low points than there have been high points, but I think we're on the, uh, on the case with everything now. We're making 2,200 odd uh, big ones an hour. We've got 29,000 in the bank. We don't have any outstanding loans. We've got some decent demand for stuff. Uh, so we're going to have to go into the city now and we're going to have to do some uh, heavy replanning. Uh, we need to make these maglevs work. God, the bane of my entire existence recently, these maglevs. Uh, they cost a lot of money. It sort of creeps up on you. You think you're placing a track and you're going to have some money left over and then wham, you've spent all your money. You have to eat buns with ketchup smeared on them for all of your meals because you can't afford proper groceries anymore. All you can afford is like a big gallon value bottle of ketchup and uh, some buns that are on sale because they're past their sell-by date. They're all like really hard and crusty and they don't taste very nice. But if you put enough ketchup on them, it'll make them a little bit soggier, a little bit easier to eat. And of course, ketchup is quite sweet and salty as well at the same time. Uh, two things that people seem to really, really love. Uh, so it works out okay. All right, great. So we had the um, we had this maglev here, which is closed uh, closed down uh, by myself by the mayor, um, and we had this maglev station over here. And uh, we discussed last episode that that might be a bit useless actually, because you've got residential, uh, mostly residential here, and this is a, quite a big residential area over here now. Now. Uh, at the start of Sipsopolis, we did a lot of strange planning. Well, we, I say we. I'll take the blame for this one. It was all me. Uh, lots of strange planning. Lots of mixed areas with like little dots of commercial here and there. And I think that might be contributing to our traffic problems as well. Uh, the fact that we have some commercial like up here, you know, some industrial over here with no real uh, easy way to get up here. Look at all these people still soldiering on despite the fact that the road system in Sipsopolis is just a complete piece of garbage. If you could package up the whole thing and send it here, it would be good. Uh, and then all the people could work at incinerating it. Of course, we're not using uh, industrial incinerators in Sipsopolis. We actually have a team of about 5,000 people who uh, chew the garbage up uh, in, into, into nothing, and then, uh, and then they pee it out into, into the wilderness somewhere to help the trees grow. I don't know if you've ever seen that before. I saw a documentary about this guy who ate an entire Spitfire. Like, he actually ate, physically, an entire replica Spitfire plane, which was made out, out of a lot of metal and wood and stuff. And it took him forever, but he did it. And he's still alive. He didn't even die from eating that. Uh, and I don't understand how that is even possible. First of all, I'm not sure how he even took the bites out of the plane in the first place because I would imagine his teeth would break. Uh, unless he had like some assistant that was just like welding little bits off, bite-sized chunks that he could then put into his mouth. But even then, I mean, chewing like chewing up metal and stuff, they'd have to be really thin strips that you could eventually like gnaw through and stuff. I don't even think that that's possible. And actually, I think that guy might be a, a little bit of a magician. Uh, before we start going through here and we start uh, tearing things down and uh, causing a lot of issues, let us just check mass transit. Uh, let's see, the maglev uh, system surprisingly has one rider per day, even though it's closed. That must be old man Sam uh, just reliving the glory days of when the maglev was actually functioning in Sipsopolis. And he just sits on the train, even though it doesn't go anywhere all day, every day with his uh, brown paper bag packed lunch uh, and a sad song playing in the background. He waits for 13 minute intervals every time because that's how often the maglev uh, used to turn up when it was still running. Uh, and he is really just mentally still in that uh, time when the maglev used to run. And actually sometimes when people walk by in the middle of the night, you can hear him going like toot toot and making like the maglev sounds. You know, he's just sitting on the maglev and he's like, next stop. Dumpsville or whatever this area is now called. We call it Dumpsville. It's kind of dumpy. Looks like a Dumpsville. Anyway, old man Sam, everybody. The uh, the crazy maglev rider. Uh, planes, none. Boats, none. Trains, none. Streetcars. How we doing? Wow. Okay, great. Streetcars have really taken off in a major way. Look at this. 11,000 riders per day. 25 minute average wait time. Very good. Not bad at all. I'm very pleased with that. We might need to expand. We might need to add some new streetcars eventually, but not now. That's good. And buses? Pretty bad. <laughs> That's a long wait for a bus. Uh, the old age pensioners of Sipsopolis are... 
furious. As usual, they're probably mad uh, for a variety of different reasons, uh, but top of the list will definitely be these bad buses. We're going to have to sort it out later. Uh, for now, we are going to go into our zoning and we're going to replan some of these zones. We're going to get some of this commercial off of these crappy roads here. And we're going to try to make this whole area here uh, like a commercial paradise. There's not enough shoppers at the moment, but that's fine because when we move a lot of the commercial out of here, we're going to make most of this residential. Now, people will uh, pile out of these places and try to get onto these main arterial roads down to the commercial area, but that's fine because we're going to help them get there with mass transit and stuff as well. I've been gassing a lot. Look at that. We have 74,000 big ones in the bank and our hourly is just climbing. Look at that, 2,700 big ones per hour. We can almost, uh, well, we can totally afford to add the annex uh, for this. And I think we should after we've replanned this area. Let's stick to what we said we were going to do. Let's get rid of all of this uh, residential out of here. We want all the residential out of here now. Uh, well, maybe not all of it. Well, we probably want the stuff along here out of here too. We want to leave these roads relatively congestion free, uh, as in we don't want stuff turning in uh, and, and causing like traffic jams and stuff. Okay, great. That's all gone. Now we should be able to get in here and just knock down all these houses, these poor bastards. They're just trying to live their lives and preventing them from doing that. It's going to cost us a little to do this. It's gonna, we're going to take a bit of a hit. We're going to take a population hit. We're probably going to take a money per hour hit as well. But that's okay. We currently have no demand for commercial. That's all going to change fairly soon. So we want to get commercial in this little round bit here. We'll probably put like a park or two in here as well, just to sort of uh, help boost the area. And then let's get some commercial in here. Look, there's commercials moving in uh, despite there being no demand, which is fine for now. Uh, but we're going to make sure that that demand is, uh, is up where it needs to be fairly soon by wrecking some of this commercial and replacing it uh, with residential. So we'll start meeting some of this res residential demand and then we'll create some commercial demand and then these should uh, prosper in the meantime. Hopefully, uh, that should be the case. Uh, let us go straight for a uh, AR Athletic Center. Let's futurize this little roundabout commercial area uh, while we can. Look at that, already uh, medium wealth, hopefully. Is it medium? Not quite. We might need to make another one. We can add another one to the back of this straight away. 80 bucks an hour for this thing to keep it running. Not a problem. Uh, what do people who work in uh, commercial buildings like to do on their breaks? Well, of course, they like to play tennis. But we're going to say they like to play basketball because basketball is much more fun than tennis IRL. Uh, was so says me. I'm sure that it's probably not the case. Look at that. Two basketball courts so that everybody can go out, do some really slamming hot dunks, slam dunks all day long. Well, I say all day long, on their lunch hour. I don't know if their bosses would appreciate them pursuing a career in the NBA, uh, such as like Charles Barkley did way back in the day, also Michael Jordan, and Magic Johnson, some, uh, some, some, really, some really key legendary figures in the uh, world of NBA. Uh, of course, they all worked desk jobs at some point and were practicing their uh, hoop hustle uh, on their lunch hour. And their bosses were like, you better tone down that hoop hustle because we got TPS reports to file. And Michael Jordan was like, fuck you, Joe. I'm going to be a basketball legend one day. And he did it. He's actually in the Basketball Hall of Fame. He's the best. He had such amazing hang time when he was in the air. Nobody could beat him. He, he did like the best dunks of all time. It was amazing. Great. Uh, let's go back into the zoning and uh, let's see if we can get rid of some of this commercial now. Look at this commercial is clogging up these roads big time. All these people are clamoring to get to these jobs and they shouldn't be. So we are going to get rid of them. Uh, I don't even think most of these are developing because uh, the, the area is not big enough. And look at these residential buildings have built all the way back. So we can probably get rid of Mega Jolt Coffee. Also, Burnt Beans Cafe. Nobody wants to go there. Burnt Beans Cafe. I mean, come on. And Blue Bean Coffee. Lots of coffee shops up along here, uh, which now lo no longer exist. And there should be some room now for these uh, residential areas to, uh, to build back now that these are all gone. Uh, where was the other one? There's a couple of... Here, yeah, there we go. There was, there's not going to be any room for these to grow into anything meaningful, either. The dainty nibble, concerned about crime, no longer, and top hats and monocles, also concerned about crime. Criminals notoriously do not wear top hats or monocles, so maybe part of the concern was that they weren't getting a lot of shoppers due to the fact that they were catering to non-criminals almost exclusively. 
What a bunch of bastards. Holy shit. Uh, okay, let us get rid of this so that it never turns into anything. We can uh, backfill some of these areas with trees. I mean, people love trees. Scobby said. Uh, and me included. I, I love a good tree. Uh, we got rid of some commercial there, and that instantly turned to residential. Not quite sure how that happened. Let's also get rid of this commercial here. Uh, we'll get rid of whoever is, is working here. It's a vacant business now hiring. Uh... Everybody was interviewed and ready to turn up, and then the building collapsed because Killdozer accidentally ran into it, Paint Sniffer, on one of his uh, massive uh, angry tangents, um, normally caused by sniffing too much of the silver paint. Silver paint notoriously bad for Paint Sniffer's uh, mood in general um, because he's just a bit of a bastard. Let's get rid of all of this commercial here. There's so much commercial dotted in here. I don't know why I did this. It's so annoying. It's really actually annoyed me. It depressed me slightly as well. Uh, is this industrial? No, this is, uh, this is all once again commercial. We can get rid of these two commercial buildings here. Uh, and they, of course the aim of this is to uh, get rid of all the traffic jams up in this area because people are trying to get here to work. Look, there's a fa there's just randomly a factory here that doesn't need to be here. We're at minus 289 uh, per hour, but it's fine. We have 99,000 in the bank plus all of our loans and plus this area uh, should start developing now. See, we've got a little bit of demand for low wealth uh, commercial now from uh, knocking all of those down. Uh, and we're going to move this industrial to where it needs to be, up in, in and around here too. Look, we've got this whole Triforce area that's like totally undeveloped uh, for industrial. So we'll try to get rid of some of these as well and just make this as much sort of residential as we can. And then we can connect all of these areas that we're, uh, that we're making with uh, a maglev system, hopefully. And a maglev system that will hopefully not bankrupt me uh, when I try to place it. That would be an ideal situation, actually. Look at this. That's actually looking not too bad. Uh, there's a little bit of work still to be done, obviously, but, oh, uh, look at, how, how come these are like still hiring? What, do we just not have enough people? I don't think we have enough people in the city to actually hire. Uh, we have 82,510 people in this glorious city right now, and uh, we're only losing 41, ah, oh, look at that, 69 an hour, what a number, Jesus. Uh, 39 now, uh, but it was 69 for such a brief moment in time. Lucky 69. Great. I'm just trying to find this abandoned building. Oh, there it is. <laughs> it's like right there. Not enough freight shipments apparently for this commercial air. Ah, there. I've seen more. Oh, look at all this. Look at this commercial area over here. It's such a huge commercial area that does not need to be here. We will get rid of it and we will replace it with uh, something else like uh, some residential. We're going to need some uh, high wealth uh, sooner rather than later. Uh, I'm just going to knock all these down. So we'll make a little area of high wealth and start growing that uh, outwards, possibly. Maybe like this area in here. It was high wealth at some point, I think, and is no longer anymore. Uh, wow, look at that. We're down in the hole a massive uh, 1,000 an hour. Not the best. What's this area like over here? Okay, there's lots of low wealth over here. Uh, and the high wealth seems to be around here. So uh, we could probably just improve this. There's an excitatorium here randomly for some stupid reason. Don't know why. We're going to get rid of it. We're going to replace it with something that's going to uh, help some high wealth develop. This like little area here will be our high wealth area to start with. Dr. Phil and, uh, of course, Uncle Phil will invite all of their friends to be here. There's an AR Athletic Center here, which is not too bad. That's probably helping out a little bit. Uh, and, of course, we probably also want to get these are expensive, 480 an hour, Jesus. I mean, compared to this, a flower plaza, which is only 40 an hour. Get a flower plaza in here very easily, actually, and uh, probably get a couple of high wealths off the back of it. Uh, maybe like on the corner here, might be nice. Oh, look at that, that is nice. Look, we can expand on this slightly now and improve the radius of the high wealth out a little bit too. Uh, small sculpture garden, like right next to it possibly. Uh, link up to it. Oh, look at that. We can just about get... Yeah, there we go. That works. That that works a little bit. Look, some of these uh, places will now become high wealth, uh, which is very good. Do we want to have another, like, another flower plaza, like, on the side here? There, that's fine. That'll be good. We'll get a couple of high wealths out of that at, at the very least. And look at the density of this area is already improved. So look, it's going to... It's going to go up. It's going to go up into like super apartments and we're going to be able to slowly fulfill some of this uh, demand for high wealth. Very good. Commercial demand uh, is rising as well. And look at this area is starting to flourish. Uh, of course, at the uh, same time, there's also an earthquake, which is uh, not the best. 
just gonna have to weather this one. Hopefully it says, uh, oh shit, no. It's right in the high wealth area too. Maybe, uh, maybe Uncle Phil fell out of his bed. <laughs> maybe he had too much to drink, right? And he rolled out of his bed and that, no? Because he's, no? No, okay, fine. Never mind. Just forget I said that. Uh, okay, well, it uh, looks like our high wealth area has been uh, totaled. Look at that. There's been a disaster. Uh, the emergency crews, oh, look, the, flower, the entire fla flower plaza that we just placed is now gone. There's a fire truck responding uh, to some sort of fire here at Soris Tidal Co. Fantastic. Uh, so, uh, everything I just did, literally, I have to do again. I can't fucking believe it. Let's replace it with, like, a bigger park this time. How about that? That might be fun. How about, like, uh, what's this one? Minus 40 an hour? Small sculpture garden? I'll go for something a bit bigger, like an, a large urban sculpture garden? 240 an hour? I don't think so. That's a bit too expensive. That's a little bit better. 120 an hour. We can fit that right here on the corner. Kablam! Ah, we got pretty much the same coverage we had before with just that one, so that's fine. We'll leave that there for now. We'll let this area start to uh, grow a bit. Let's just make sure that there's no bus stops uh, around here. There is. There's one here that's probably bringing the uh, value of the place down. Let's get rid of this bus stop. These people are all going to be so wealthy that they'll never even think about buses unless uh, there's a bus blocking the way of their uh, Porsche going uh, like 5,000 miles an hour. Of course, that is like one of the biggest pet peeves of every rich person who owns a Porsche. They want to get onto the roads and they want to let loose in a major way. They want to go faster than the speed of light. And of course, uh, they're not allowed to. There's road laws prohibiting them from doing that. Uh, but they still try anyway. And uh, buses and cyclists are the biggest obstacles for them uh, in achieving that goal. And it's a constant struggle every single day for the people of Sipsopolis um, trying to live together in perfect harmony. I, I noticed that there are just armies and armies of people walking on the sidewalks, which is a good sign. That means they're no longer using their cars. That must mean that streetcar use should be on the up. It is 12,580, wow, climbing all the time. Look at that, 41 minute average wait. And there's a lot of people using the buses too. Mass transit is something that we'll get back to very shortly to try to figure out uh, because we will also want to get a maglev station in this commercial district and connect it up with the rest of the line. Look, all of the people here will be able to get to the commercial district via maglev and all the people here as well will be able to get there via maglev. Uh, and that should ease some of the congestion along this main road. Look at the main road as well is being used finally look at all the people turning up to the academy very exciting actually i'm very very excited at the prospect of sipsopolis actually flourishing uh, off the back of the fact that we screwed up so badly well i say we i always say we for some reason i don't mean to drag you into this i really don't mean to do it it's all my fault and i take full responsibility for that even though occasionally i do say we i'm really sorry about that um, this is a low wealth area. Let's keep it low wealth, but let's futurize it. Let's go for one of these excitatoriums, uh, if we can fit one somewhere. What the heck is that? Is that also an excitatorium? I don't think it is. I think it's like just... What is it? It is an excitatorium. It is futurized around here, just not enough. Look, we've got to sort of like spread the future over to this side. Okay, let's do that then. We get an excitatorium on the corner here. So that people can uh, visit the Excitatorium, that should be fine. This is all high wealth here, and we want to futurize and help uh, this low and medium wealth area over here. Look, at these people are fairly uh, annoyed over here. I don't know why. Uh, maybe if we build an Excitatorium right next to them, uh, they'll be a little bit happier. Do you think that might, uh, might happen? Look at this. Like opposing corners Excitatoriums. I don't know if that's a little bit counterproductive, actually. Maybe we should just, like, shove one in here instead. Look at that. All these people benefit greatly from an excitatorium. Also, the future. They love the future. And the future is bright. Uh, there we go. Fine. We've got a lot of little excitatoriums, but it's okay. They don't actually cost that much. 40 an hour is just about manageable. And look at how much fun it looks. Look at that. It's got, like, some sort of, like, wooden tower. With, like, a little walkway. My kids love that kind of shit. They love to walk, like, on a walkway. Especially one, like, with a rope and stuff. Low land value, my ass. What are you talking about? This is, like, one of, the, like, the nicest places in town, you bastards. Holy crap. Uh, did we get these guys? Yeah, we did. Okay. A couple of abandoned buildings, but that's okay. Uh, we should have some commercial demand we have a lot uh, and we have no industrial demand it's great we actually got away with getting rid of uh, those industrial buildings where they shouldn't have been um, and not replacing them so look at this now we've done it uh, we did it in one episode as well we got rid of most of 
the commercial uh, in this area. We want to get rid of these guys too. And look at that. We're back up to 711 an hour. We really want to get rid of these guys actually because uh, there's a lot of traffic heading towards these areas. M Amxis Tower, which actually looks a little bit like the Dark Portal from uh, World of Warcraft. Look, you go in there, you get to Outland. No, just me. All right. And uh, the Green Center, making a lot of profit. No longer. I'm very sorry to say the Green Center, but you're gone. You're off the case, well and truly, and we're going to be replacing you uh, very swiftly with uh, some residential areas that we can then prop up into high wealth uh, while we wait for our high wealth mega tower. Great. This has been a pretty good episode, actually. I think we've I think we've made some really good progress here. It looks like I haven't seen any like really massive traffic jams uh, this episode, so I think we're on the right track with this replanning and stuff. Uh, we've got a lot of money in the bank. We continue to build up our funds in the bank as well, so that we can connect up this maglev system, and uh, we can continue sort of beefing out this uh, commercial area down here as well. Look, it's like by the water and everything. All the CEOs can sit in their in their um, top floor offices and gaze out at the ocean and draw some inspiration for all of the big ones that they're going to make. Oh, it's going to be fantastic. The uh, Tom Clark Mega Tower is, uh, wow, slowly creeping back up into profitability after all that time. Uh, it only lost six grand yesterday, and that is up from a whopping 91 grand uh, that it was losing uh, previous days. So there we go. Uh, all in all, not bad. Uh, we're in much better shape than we were anyway a couple of episodes ago. Great. Okay, well, I will leave you there then. Uh, as usual, thank you very much for watching. And uh, tune in next time. We'll be back. We'll be back fixing SimCity, or not SimCity, Sipsopolis, making it better. Uh, and eventually getting a lot more Mega Towers and stuff. And just making this look like the coolest goddamn thing you've ever seen in your whole life. Hopefully. Um, so until then, I'll see you next time.